Hey, it's about 3.38 p.m. here in Shelbina, and I'm going to take some time this afternoon to go through the word abomination. Um, did the Lord give me this? Well, those of you who are also born again and of the same spirit, if it be thus, then the spirits will identify, the spirit will identify, and the Lord will testify. Anyway, here we go. Now then, the first mention of abomination in the authorized version of the scriptures is in Genesis chapter 43, verse 32. And it reads, And they sat on for him by himself, and for them by themselves, and for the Egyptians which did not eat with him, but by themselves, because the Egyptians might not eat bread with the Hebrews, for it is an abomination unto the Egyptians. And this was when Joseph had visited, or Joseph's brothers, I'm sorry, had visited him, I believe the second time, and he sat him down to eat um, with him. Now then, Abomination in the Webster's 1828 Dictionary. Let's go. L-M-O. Abolition. Abominable. Abomination. Abomination. Noun. Extreme hatred, detestation. Definition one. Definition two. The object of detestation. A common significance in scripture. The way of the wicked is an abomination to the Lord. Proverbs 15. Definition three. Hence, defilement, pollution, in a physical sense or evil doctrines and practices which are moral defilements idols and idolatry are called abominations the Jews were an abomination to the Egyptians and the sacred animals of the Egyptians were an abomination to the Jews the Roman army is called the abomination of desolation Matthew 24 13 in short, whatever is an object of extreme hatred is called an abomination. So for some of you out there who are in love with this um, Hartley here, I'm an abomination to you, huh? Well, as long as I'm in right standing with the Lord, so be it. Yo no quiero. Okay. Now then, in the New Testament, abomination comes up this way. In Matthew 24, verse 15, and in the authorized version of the scriptures, I will look this up. Matthew 26, 24, verse 15. When ye therefore shall see the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel the prophet standing in the holy place, whoso readeth, let him understand. 16. Then let them which be in Judea flee into the mountains. So speaking of the abomination of desolation, which is to come, coming soon. Mark 13. Verse 4 reads parallel to this. Mark 13, verse 4. Hmm. I guess I've written that down wrong. One moment. <laughs> was Mark chapter 13 verse 14. I do apologize so much for my infallibility, right? 
But when ye shall see the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel the prophet, standing where it ought not, let him that readeth understand, then let them that be in Judea flee to the mountains. Okay, one more reference to abomination in the New Testament, or the group of books referred to as the New Testament, and that would be in Revelation chapter 21, verse 27. So, Revelation 21, verse 27. And there shall in no wise enter into any into it anything that defileth, neither whatsoever worketh abomination, or maketh a lie, but they which are written in the Lamb's book of life. Now then, what it's referring to is... Um, the New Jerusalem. This chapter speaks of the New Jerusalem and the glory that will be of it, that will be in it. Um, her light was like unto a stone most precious, even like a jasper stone, clear as crystal, and had a wall great and high, and had twelve gates, and at the gates twelve angels and names written thereon, which are the names of the twelve tribes of the children of Israel. And the foundation of the wall of the city, the foundations of the wall of the city were garnished with all manner of precious stones. The first foundation was jasper, the second sapphire, the third a chalcedony, the fourth an emerald, the fifth sardonyx, the sixth sardius, the seventh chrysolite, the eighth beryl, the ninth a topaz, the tenth a chrysoprasus, a chrysoprasus, <laughs> the eleventh a jacinth, the twelfth an amethyst, and the twelve gates were twelve pearls, every several gate was of one pearl and the street of the city was pure gold, as if it were transparent glass. Now I had been taught years ago that what gives gold its color or what causes the gold to be gold is um, the impurities in it, and since nothing impure will be in the New Jerusalem, then it would make sense that the gold there would be clear as glass. Now then, we're headed for some Old Testament verses, or I am. Um, I don't know how long this is going to take. Don't have any idea. It'll take as long as it takes. So, get your authorized version of the scriptures and sit down. Enjoy the read. Okay. Now we've read first mention in Genesis 43, verse 32. Next, I'll be going on to Leviticus chapter 18, verse 22. So, Leviticus 10, 15, 17, 18. Leviticus chapter 18, verse 22. Thou shalt not lie with mankind as with womankind. It is abomination. Yes, it most definitely is. And in Leviticus chapter 20, verse 13, I will read 20, verse 13. If a man also lie with mankind as he lieth with a woman, both of them have committed an abomination. They shall surely be put to death. Their blood shall be upon them. So yes, there we go. There we go. For a man to lie with a man as with womankind, sodomy, is an abomination. Okay? Yes, it is. That I have never denied in what I have knowledge of of my 52 years. I've never denied that. 
Okay, next we go to Deuteronomy chapter 7. Okay, 1, 5, 9, 7. Chapter 7, verses 25 and 26 I have written down. The graven images of their gods shall ye burn with fire. Thou shalt not desire the silver or gold that is on them, nor take it unto thee, lest thou be snared therein. For it is an abomination to the Lord thy God. Neither bring thou an abomination into thine house, lest thou be a cursed thing like it. But thou shalt utterly detest it, and thou shalt utterly abhor it, for it is a cursed thing. So in 25, the graven images of their God shall ye burn with fire. Thou shalt not desire the silver or gold that is on them, nor take it unto thee, lest thou be snared therein. For it is an abomination to the Lord thy God. What is abomination to the Lord thy God? The graven images of their gods, which ye shall burn, the silver or gold that is on them. Those are the abominations in this case, idols, false gods, and what comes off of them. It wasn't sodomy. You mean there's something else that's an abomination to the Lord? Uh-oh. Okay. Deuteronomy chapter 12, verses 29 through 32 is what I'm going to read. When the Lord thy God shall cut off the nations from before thee, whither thou goest to possess them, and thou succeedest them, and dwellest in their lands, take heed to thyself that thou be not snared by following them, after that they be destroyed from before thee, destroyed, and that thou inquire not after their gods, saying, How did these nations serve their gods? Even so will I do likewise. Thou shalt not do so unto the Lord thy God, for every abomination to the Lord which he hateth, they have done unto their gods. For even their sons and their daughters they have burnt in the fire to their gods. Thou shalt not do so unto the Lord thy God, for every abomination to the Lord, every abomination to the Lord, that's more than one, which he hateth, have they done unto their gods. Semicolon. For even their sons and their daughters they have burnt in the fire to their gods. Would that be an abomination in this verse? Read it. It's accordingly. So children, according to the scriptures, are a gift from God. You take those babies that God has given you as a gift, and you say you don't want it, and you kill it. It's an abomination unto the Lord God. Okay? So let's go to Deuteronomy chapter 17. Be verses 2 through 5. <clears throat> if there be found among you within any of thy gates which the Lord thy God giveth thee, man or woman, that hath wrought wickedness in the sight of the Lord thy God in transgressing his covenant, God's covenant, and hath gone and served other gods and worshipped them, either the sun or moon or any of the host of heaven which I have not commanded, and it be told thee, and thou hast heard of it, and inquired diligently, and behold it be true, and the thing certain that such abomination is wrought in Israel, 
Then shalt thou bring forth that man or that woman which have committed the wicked thing unto thy gates, even that man or that woman, and shalt stone them with stones till they die. Of course, we no longer do that. Okay. Abomination. And what was the abomination in this case? Well, let's read it again. If there be found among you within any of thy gates which the Lord thy God giveth thee, man or woman, that hath wrought wickedness in the sight of the Lord thy God, in transgressing his covenant, one, and hath gone and served other gods, and worshipped them, either the sun, Catholicism, or the moon, Allah in Islam, or any of the host of heaven, astrology, which I have not commanded, and it be told thee, and thou hast heard of it, and inquired diligently, and behold, it be true, and the thing certain that such abomination is wrought in Israel, then shalt thou bring forth that man or that woman which have committed the wicked thing unto thy gates, even that man or that woman, and shalt stone them with stones till they die. So that sort of disloyalty in the serving of false gods was considered such an offense unto the Lord that they be stoned until they die. And Deuteronomy chapter 18, in which I will read verses 9 through 12. When thou art come into the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee, thou shalt not learn to do after the abominations of those nations. There shall not be found among you any one that maketh his son or his daughter to pass through the fire sacrificing them to Molech, aborting them because you don't want to live up to the responsibility that you made, or that useth divination, Long Island medium, or an observer of times, or an enchanter, or a witch, or a charmer, or a consulter with familiar spirits, or a wizard, or a necromancer, hauling dead bodies of supposed saints into the... Um, Catholic churches to um, look at and to worship the um, Vatican, worship of the divine serpent, to to look at and to worship um, necromancy. For all that do these things, all that do these things are an abomination unto the Lord. And because of these abominations, the Lord thy God doth drive them out from before thee. So then, all that do these things, reread it, look at the list, Deuteronomy chapter 22 verse 5. Oh, this is, this is a good one for today. Um, Deuteronomy chapter 22, verse 5. The woman shall not wear that which pertaineth unto a man, neither shall a man put on a woman's garment. For all that do so are abomination unto the Lord thy God. Um, I think Tyler Perry, for one. Yeah, good old Medea. Um, as far as it be known, he's a man wearing that which pertaineth unto a woman, and making millions doing it, loved by the world. And he, he's a good one to follow. Um, I saw a video clip or thumbnail where he was laying his hands on Pastor T.D. Jakes and praying over him, bearing in mind that, number one, the man is an actor. Actor. Number two, he's an abomination unto the Lord. Um how many Christian women out there are into the um, sausage wrapper pants, I call them. The, they used to be worn under dresses when it was cold out. Um, 
for purposes of heat, uh, how many are into the skinny jeans or which are a cousin to what they used to call hysterectomy pants because they were so tight. Um, how many are wearing or into the unisex clothes which go either way. Um, the woman shall not wear that which pertaineth unto a man, yes, but neither shall a man put on a woman's garment. For all they that do so are abomination unto the Lord thy God. It doesn't say straight up sodomy, does it? Deuteronomy chapter 23, verse 18. Okay. Thou shalt not bring the hire of a whore or the price of a dog into the house of the Lord thy God for any vow, for even both these are abomination unto the Lord. Well, thou shalt not bring the hire of a whore or the price of a dog into the house of the Lord thy God for any vow. For even both these, both these are abomination unto the Lord thy God. Both what? The hire of a whore or the price of a dog. They are both abomination to the Lord thy God. Of course, if you're not his, then the Lord thy God doesn't apply anyway. Do what you want. Deuteronomy chapter 24 Verses 1 through 4 is what I will read. When a man hath taken a wife and married her, and it come to pass that she find no favor in his eyes, because he hath found some uncleanness in her, then let him write her a bill of divorcement, and give it in her hand, and send her out of his house. And when she is departed out of his house, she may go and be another man's wife. And if the latter husband hate her, and write her a bill of divorcement, and giveth it in her hand, and sendeth her out of his house, or if the latter husband die, which took her to be his wife, her former husband, which sent her away, may not take her again to be his wife after that she is defiled for that is abomination before the Lord and thou shalt not cause the land to sin which the Lord thy God giveth thee for an inheritance and I have heard of such happening and I have heard of such happening okay So we will go to Proverbs chapter 6. Psalm. Proverbs 6, 7, 6. Verses 16 through 19 is what I'll be reading. These six things doth the Lord hate, the Lord hate. Yea, seven are an abomination unto him. Seven are an abomination unto him. More than one? I thought there was only one. A proud look, a lying tongue, and hands that shed innocent blood, and heart that deviseth wicked imaginations, feet that be swift in running to mischief, a false witness that speaketh lies, and he that soweth discord among brethren. And among these false prophets and preachers and brethren on YouTube, it runs rampant. Be very, very careful. I'll now go to Proverbs chapter 8. Verses 6 and 7. Hear, 
for I will speak of excellent things, and the opening of my lips shall be right things. For my mouth shall speak truth, and wickedness is an abomination to my lips. Hmm. For my mouth shall speak truth, and wickedness is an abomination to my lips. I'll go on with eight. All the words of my mouth are in righteousness, where there is nothing froward or perverse in them. So could it be that wickedness, frowardness, perversion is an abomination to my lips? Okay, Proverbs chapter 11, verses 1 and 2. A false balance is abomination to the Lord, and a just weight is his delight. And I had to add this, When pride cometh, then cometh shame, but with the lowly is wisdom. Um, Job 28, 28, And unto man he said, Behold, the fear of the Lord, that is wisdom, and to depart from evil is understanding. Lord, give me wisdom and understanding. Now then, verses 20 and 21 in Proverbs chapter 11 also. They that are of a froward heart are abomination to the Lord. They that are of a froward heart. But such as are upright in their way are his delight. Though hand join in hand, the wicked shall not be unpunished, but the seed of the righteous shall be delivered. Now then, froward. Let's look froward up in good old Webster's 1828. E.F. For a word, adjective, perverse, that is, turning from with aversion or reluctance, not willing to yield or comply with what is required, unyielding, ungovernable, refractory, disobedient, peevish, as a froward child. They are a very froward generation, children in whom is no faith. Deuteronomy chapter 32 for that reference. Okay. Now Proverbs chapter 12, verse 22. Lying lips are abomination to the Lord, but they that deal truly are his delight. Lying lips are abomination to the Lord, but they that deal truly are his delight. And those of you out there who are lying on the um, truly saved brethren in order to, what, I don't know, build your cult or to trash them just to trash them when you don't when you don't know what you're talking about at all lying on them guess what your lips are abomination to the lord it's not sodomy but lying lips chapter 13 verses 19 and 20 The desire accomplished is sweet to the soul, but it is abomination to fools to depart from evil. He that walketh with wise men shall be wise, but a companion of fools shall be destroyed. And what is a fool? The fool hath said in his heart, there is no God in his heart. A lot of fools say that there is a God with their lips with their lips, but with their heart, <laughs> no, either that or their God is the God of this world. Okay, Proverbs chapter 15, 
Proverbs chapter 15, verses 8 through 10. The sacrifice of the wicked is an abomination to the Lord, but the prayer of the upright is his delight. The way of the wicked is an abomination unto the Lord, but he loveth him that followeth after righteousness. Correction is grievous unto him that forsaketh the way, and he that hateth reproof shall die. The sacrifice of the wicked is an abomination to the Lord. Huh. But he loveth him that followeth after righteousness. But the prayer of the upright is his delight. Pardon me. 15.8 Once again, the sacrifice of the wicked is an abomination to the Lord. But the prayer of the upright is his delight. So, I would suppose that if you are the wicked, you're not the Lord's, and you're supposedly trying to sacrifice to him, well, that's an abomination to him. So don't bother. Um, the way of the wicked, period, it says, the way of the wicked is an abomination unto the Lord, but he loveth him that followeth after righteousness. Proverbs chapter 16 verse 5 oh everyone that is proud in heart is an abomination to the Lord everyone that is proud in heart we don't have any of that going on though hand join in hand he shall not be unpunished Proverbs chapter 17, verse 15. He that justifieth the wicked, and he that condemn the just, even they both are abomination to the Lord. And for whom you are justifying when you are um, condemning the just um, brethren saved of the Lord, such as um, my brothers Matthew Melanson, Matthew Landau, um, Brad Ovenshine, um, Brian Denlinger, um, Aaron Judge. Um, guess what? When you condemn them being just, You are an abomination to the Lord, he that justifieth the wicked, when you justify folks, such as Tim Conan, um, Edward P.F., Martin Richling, and the sort. You are abomination to the Lord, justifying the wicked. So let's go. Proverbs chapter 20, verses 10 and 23. Divers weights and divers measures, both of them are alike abomination to the Lord. Twenty. Okay. Proverbs chapter 20, verse 23. Divers' weights are an abomination unto the Lord, and a false balance is not good. Proverbs chapter 21, verse 27. The sacrifice of the wicked is abomination, how much more when he bringeth it with a wicked mind. So once again, the sacrifice of the wicked being an abomination. 
but how much more when he bringeth it with a wicked mind. This also includes what is sin, or what at least is a sin. So in Proverbs chapter 24, verse 9, it reads, The thought of foolishness is sin, and the scorner is an abomination to men. The scorner is an abomination to men. Well, yes. Okay. I'll move on to Proverbs chapter 28. Okay. So, Proverbs chapter 28, verses 9 and 10. He that turneth away his ear from hearing the law, even his prayer shall be abomination. Whoso causeth the righteous to go astray in an evil way, he shall fall himself into his own pit, but the upright shall have good things in possession. He that turneth away his ear from hearing the law, even his prayer shall be abomination. So for those that turn away your ear from hearing the law, Though we are no longer bound to the Levitical law of the Old Testament, there are commandments in the New Testament for members of the Church of the Living God, those who truly are. Okay, 28. Moving on to Proverbs chapter 29, verse 27. An unjust man is an abomination to the just, and he that is upright in the way is abomination to the wicked. He that is upright in the way is abomination to the wicked. That's why those of you out there cannot stand um, my brothers, once again, such as Brother Brian Danlinger, Brother Aaron Judge, Brother Brad Avenshein, Brother Matthew Melanson, Brother Matthew Landau, the ones I can think of off the top of my head. Why? Because we are upright in the way. Therefore, we are an abomination unto you, the wicked. Moving on. Isaiah chapter 1. Isaiah or Isaiah chapter 1. Okay. Chapter 1, and I'll be reading verses 10 through 17 to get context. Hear the word of the Lord, ye rulers of Sodom. There we go. Give ear unto the law of our God, ye people of Gomorrah. To what purpose is the multitude of your sacrifices unto me, saith the Lord? I am full of the burnt offerings of rams and the fat of fed beasts, and I delight not in the blood of bullocks or of lambs or of he goats. When ye come to appear before me, who hath required this at your hand to tread my courts? Bring no more vain oblations. Incense is an abomination unto me. The new moons and sabbaths, the calling of assemblies I cannot away with. It is iniquity, even the solemn meeting. Your new moons and your appointed feasts my soul hateth. They are a trouble unto me. I am weary to bear them. And when ye spread forth your hands, I will hide mine eyes from you. Yea, when ye make many prayers, I will not hear. 
your hands are full of blood. Wash you, make you clean, put away the evil of your doings from before mine eyes, cease to do evil, learn to do well, seek judgment, relieve the oppressed, judge the fatherless, plead for the widow. So that is verses 10 through 17. To what purpose is the multitude of your sacrifices unto me? Bring no more vain oblations. Incense is an abomination unto me. Um, straight out. Isaiah chapter 41 verse 7 So the carpenter encouraged the goldsmith, and he that smootheth with the hammer him that smote the anvil, saying, It is ready for soldering, and he fastened it with nails, that it should not be moved. Moving on to verses 21 through 24. Produce your cause, saith the Lord. Bring forth your strong reasons, saith the King of Jacob. Let them bring forth and shew us what shall happen. Let them shew the former things what they be, that we may consider them and know the latter end of them, or declare us things for to come. Shew us the things that are to come hereafter, that we may know that ye are gods, lowercase g. Yea, do good or do evil, that we may be dismayed and behold it together. Behold, ye are of nothing, and your work of naught. An abomination is he that chooseth you. Read through the context of this chapter, you will see that this is speaking of false idols, false gods, um, and an abomination is he that chooseth you. So what is an abomination? He that chooseth these idols, these false gods, including the false Jesus that's running out there rampantly. Okay. Now, Verses 27 through 29. The first shall say to Zion, Behold, behold them, and I will give to Jerusalem one that bringeth good tidings. For I beheld them, and there was no man even among them, and there was no counselor that when I asked of him could answer a word. Behold, they are all vanity. Their works are nothing. Their molten images are wind and confusion. Hence verifying that these abominations that this speaks of are false gods, idols, molten images. Isaiah or Isaiah chapter 44 verses 8 through 20. This be a long one. Hope you can stand some scripture reading. If not, so be it. That's on you. Verses 8 through 20. Fear ye not, neither be afraid. Have not I told thee for that from that time, and have declared it? Ye are even my witnesses. Is there a God beside me? Yea, there is no God. I know not any. And the Lord God, creator of everything, created it. There were another God. He would know it. They that make a graven image are all of them vanity, and their delectable things shall not profit. And they are their own witnesses. They see not, nor know. 
that they may be ashamed. Who hath formed a god, lowercase g, or molten, a graven image that is profitable for nothing? Behold, all his fellows shall be ashamed, and the workmen, they are of men. Let them all be gathered together, let them stand up, yet they shall fear, and they shall be ashamed together. The smith with the tongs both worketh in the coals, and fashioneth it with hammers, and worketh it with the strength of his arms. Yea, he is hungry, and his strength faileth, he drinketh no water, and is faint. The carpenter stretcheth out his rule, he marketh it out with a line, he fitteth it with planes, and he marketh it out with the compass, and maketh it after the figure of a man, according to the beauty of a man, that it may remain in the house. He heweth him down cedars, and taketh the cypress and the oak, which he strengtheneth for himself among the trees of the forest. He planteth an ash, and the rain doth nourish it. Then shall it be for a man to burn, for he will take thereof and warm himself. Yea, he kindleth it, and bake, baketh bread. Yea, he maketh a god, lowercase g, and worshipeth it. He maketh it a graven image, and falleth down thereto. He burneth part thereof in the fire, with part thereof he eateth flesh. He roasteth roast, and is satisfied. Yea, he warmeth himself, and saith, Aha! I am warm. I have seen the fire. And the residue thereof he maketh a god, lowercase g, of course, even his graven image, he falleth down unto it, and worshippeth it. He prayeth unto it, and saith, Deliver me, for thou art my God. They have not known, nor understood, for he hath shut their eyes. They cannot see, and their hearts, that they cannot, cannot understand. And none considereth in his heart, neither is there any knowledge nor understanding to say, I have burned part of it in the fire, yea, also I have baked bread upon the coals thereof. I have roasted flesh and eaten it. And shall I make the residue thereof an abomination? An abomination? Shall I fall down to the stalk? of a tree. He feedeth on ashes, a deceived heart hath turned him aside, that he cannot deliver his soul, nor say, Is there not a lie in my right hand? Being in his right hand, what? The idol? The image? Graven image? The false god? Next, moving on to Jeremiah chapter 2. Jeremiah chapter 2, verses 5 through 8. Thus saith the Lord, what iniquity have your fathers found in me, that they are gone far from me, and have walked after vanity, and are become vain? Neither said they, Where is the Lord that brought us up out of the land of Egypt, that led us through the wilderness, through a land of deserts and of pits, through a land of drought and of the shadow of death, through a land that no man passed through, and where no man dwelt. And I brought you into a plentiful country to eat the fruit thereof and the goodness thereof, but when ye entered, ye defiled my land, and made mine heritage 
an abomination. The priests said not, Where is the Lord? And they that handled the law knew me not. The pastors also transgressed against me, and the prophets prophesied by Baal, and walked after things that do not profit. Wherefore I will yet plead with you, saith the Lord, with your children's children will I plead. So, what is abomination in this? 5 through 8. Thus saith the Lord, What iniquity have your fathers found in me, that they are gone far from me, and have walked after vanity, and are become vain? Neither said they, Where is the Lord that brought us up out of the land of Egypt, that led us through the wilderness, through a land of deserts and of pits, through a land of drought? and of the shadow of death through a land that no man passed through and where no man dwelleth. And I brought you into a plentiful country to eat the fruit thereof and the goodness thereof. But when ye entered, ye defiled my land and made mine heritage an abomination. Well, what was one of the things that the people were doing for that in this, in these verses? Number one, they are gone far from the Lord God and have walked after vanity and become vain. Though he led them, he brought them up out of the land of Egypt and led them through the wilderness, deserts, pits, drought of the shadow of death and a land that no man passed through and where no man dwelt. He brought them into a plentiful country to eat the fruit thereof and the goodness thereof, but when they entered, they defiled his land and made his heritage an abomination. The priests said not, Where is the Lord? And they that handled the law knew me not. The pastors also transgressed against me, and the prophets prophesied by Baal and walked after things that do not profit. Simple, they turned into the worship of false gods and prophesying by Baal. And how many prophets I see, prophets. I see a prophet is monetary, a prophet is a prophet of God. Um, how many prophecies and prophets I have seen on YouTube, um, just looking through thumbnails, prophesying that President Trump was going to win this selection and uh, win a second term. And it may be indeed that he gets a second term as the Vatican sees fit. However, didn't win one. And how do we know anyway? Because all we know is what they say. Those prophets are prophesying by Baal. The Lord did not speak to them. So, Jeremiah chapter 2, Jeremiah chapter 6, verses 6 through 15. Hmm. Uh, hold on and read Jeremiah chapter 6 verses 6 through 15 For thus hath the Lord of hosts said Hew ye down trees and cast a mount against Jerusalem This is the city to be visited She is holy oppression in the midst of her as a fountain casteth out her waters, so she casteth out her wickedness. Violence and spoil is heard in her. Before me continually is grief and wounds. Be thou instructed, O Jerusalem, lest my soul depart from thee, lest I make thee desolate, a land not inhabited. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, They shall throughly glean the remnant of Israel as a vine 
turn back thine hand as a grape gatherer into the baskets. To whom shall I speak and give warning that they may hear? Behold, their ear is uncircumcised, and they cannot hearken. Behold, the word of the Lord is unto them a reproach. They have no delight in it. Therefore I am full of the fury of the Lord. I am weary with holding in. I will pour it out upon the children abroad and upon the assembly of young men together. For even the husband with the wife shall be taken, the aged with him that is full of days, and their houses shall be turned unto others with their fields and wives together. For I will stretch out my hand upon the inhabitants of the land, saith the Lord. For from the least of them, even unto the greatest of them, every one is given to covetousness. And from the prophet, even unto the priest, every one dealeth falsely. They have healed also the hurt of the daughter of my people slightly, saying, Peace, peace, when there is no peace. Were they ashamed when they had committed abomination? Nay, they were not at all ashamed, neither could they blush. Therefore they shall fall among them that fall. At the time that I visit them they shall be cast down, saith the Lord. And I must include verse 16. Thus saith the Lord, Stand ye in the ways, and see, and ask for the old paths. Where is the good way, and walk therein, and ye shall find rest for your souls. But they said, We will not walk therein. Okay. 15. Were they ashamed when they had committed abomination? Let's see. Well, let's go back here. Jeremiah 6, 6 through 15. Found and cast out her water, so she cast out her wickedness. As a fountain casteth out her waters, speaking of Jerusalem, so casteth out her, her wickedness. It says wickedness, you know, that's a blanket statement. Violence and spoil is heard in her. Ah, there's two. Before me continually is grief and wounds. So you know from what is read in these in these verses, one, there is abomination. But not one time in those verses does it mention sodomy, the only abomination. Okay. But you know what, what I know, I'm just 52 and stupid. Okay. Jeremiah chapter 6. Now then, I will go to Jeremiah chapter 32. Jeremiah chapter 32 and read verses 32 through 35. Because of all the evil of the children of Israel and of the children of Judah, which they have done to provoke me to anger, they, their kings, their princes, their priests, and their prophets, and the men of Judah, and the inhabitants of Jerusalem. And they have turned unto me the back and not the face, though I taught them rising up early and teaching them, yet they have not hearkened to receive instruction. But they set their abominations in the house which is called by my name to defile it, 
and they built the high places of Baal, which are in the valley of the son of Hinnom, to cause their sons and their daughters to pass through the fire unto Molech, which I commanded them not, neither came it into my mind that they should do this abomination to cause Judah to sin. Okay, so Jeremiah chapter 32, 32 through 35. But they set their abominations in the house, which is called by my name, to defile it. Um, because of all the evil of the children of Israel and of the children of Judah, which they have done to provoke me to anger, they, their kings, their princes, their priests, and their prophets, and the men of Judah, and the inhabitants of Jerusalem, and they have turned unto me the back and not the face, though I taught them, rising up early and teaching them, yet they have not hearkened to receive instruction. But they set their abominations in the house which is called by my name to defile it. What were those abominations? Abominations, however, is the point there was more than one guess what there is more than one abomination unto the Lord and the point of this reading is not to for me is not to explain exactly what an abomination is but the point being is that there is more than one abomination and more than one abomination unto God um, if you are not receiving or getting that at this moment, then perhaps you're just a bit obtuse. Um, the Spirit of Truth will lead you into truth, even if indeed you do belong to Him, to the Lord, to our Father Jesus Christ. Um, let's go on. Jeremiah chapter 32. Okay. Next will be Ezekiel chapter 18. A verse says 10 through 13. Okay. If he beget a son that is a robber, a shedder of blood, and that doeth the like to any one of these things, and that doeth not any of those duties, but even hath eaten upon the mountains, and defiled his neighbor's wife, hath oppressed the poor and needy, hath spoiled by violence, hath not restored the pledge, and hath lifted up his eyes to the idols, hath committed abomination, hath given forth upon usury, hath taken increase, shall he then live? He shall not live. He hath done all these abominations. He sh shall surely die. His blood shall be upon him. What abominations? A shedder of blood that doeth the like to any one of these things that doeth not any of these duties, but even hath eaten upon the mountains, high places, and defiled his neighbor's wife. He, he, well guess what? He would have to be a he, and he defiling his neighbor's wife, because guess what? It's a matter of what you are, not a matter of what you feel like for that day. Then that would be would that be sodomy for a male and a female to get together and for the male to defile his neighbor's wife? I'm not seeing it, but what would I know? Okay, Ezekiel 18. Hmm. And hath, hath oppressed the poor and needy, hath spoiled by violence 
such as those violent tongues that are out there spoiling, or at least trying to, hath not restored the pledge, and hath lifted up his eyes to the idols. Idol worship, which could be as much as the clothes on your back, the house that you're in, or the car you drive down the road, or the man that you worship over the YouTube, hath committed abomination, hath given forth upon usury, banks, more deeply pawn shops, payday loans which rob a person blind, and hath taken increase. Shall he then live? He shall not live. He hath done all these abominations. He shall surely die. His blood shall be upon him. Well, he will die, whomever he is. Okay, Ezekiel 18. Ezekiel chapter 22. Verses 10 and 11. <clears throat> 22, 10 and 11. In thee have they discovered their father's nakedness. In thee have they humbled her that was set apart for pollution. And one hath committed abomination with his neighbor's wife. And another hath lewdly defiled his daughter-in-law. And another in thee hath humbled his sister, his father's daughter. Okay. 10 and 11? Yes, that's it. Now in these and in this list, I find... Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Hmm. In thee have they discovered their father's nakedness. Yeah. In thee have they humbled her that was set apart for pollution, and one hath committed abomination with his neighbor's wife, his neighbor's wife. Abomination, his neighbor's wife. Now then to the last reference, which is Malachi chapter 2, verses 11 and 12. Four. Malachi 2, verses 11 and 12. Judah hath dealt treacherously, and an abomination is committed in Israel and in Jerusalem. For Judah hath profaned the holiness of the Lord which he loved, and hath married the daughter of a strange god. The Lord will cut off the man that doeth this, the master and the scholar, out of the tabernacles of Jacob, and him that offereth an offering unto the Lord of hosts. Judah hath dealt treacherously, and an abomination is committed in Israel and in Jerusalem. Semicolon, it goes on to tell what the abomination is. For Judah hath profaned the holiness of the Lord which he loved, and hath married the daughter of a strange god. He hath married the daughter of a strange god. The Lord will cut off the man that doeth this, the master and the scholar, out of the tabernacle of Jacob, and him that offereth an offering unto the Lord of hosts. Granted, yes, this is speaking to the the tribes of Israel. This is speaking to the Jews, but for instruction in righteousness, instruction in righteousness, we can see. Now then, <clears throat> as I would said once in this video, the um, point of this video was not to explain exactly what an abomination is, although if in reading these 
versus you can't see. The Lord have mercy on you. Open your eyes. Um, the point of the video is is that there is more than one abomination sodomy is not right you will sterilize yourself and you will suffer misery you will not be gay thank you and it is indeed a horrid abomination but is this the only abomination that there is? Read through the scriptures. Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forever. Who is Jesus Christ? Jesus Christ is the Lord God. He is God, spirit, soul, body. Holy Ghost, the Spirit, God, the soul the Lord Jesus Christ, the body, they are one God. He is one God. So, Jesus Christ being God, the one and only God, the same yesterday, today, and forever. Dispensations change what God is and what God feels and what God thinks and what God says doesn't. Um, look up for yourself Jesus Christ the same yesterday, today and forever um, I suppose that'll be it for this time, for this evening for this day for the brethren may the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with you um, may he stand up against those that um lie, those that look to tear apart, to rip people down, um, to get followers for themselves, and who lie against the truth. Um, a couple of them, they're dying with cancer. They're dying with cancer. I think the Lord has said, um, I think he's given his take on that, if you will. Um, I guess there's still breath in their lungs. It would be possible for them to convert, to be saved, to become true members of the Church of the Living God. Probable, probable, eh, possible. Yes, for with God, all things are possible. Probable, uh, they've made up their minds. And being as God does give us free will, and as a dear brother says, he ain't holding a gun to your head, then um, it's not very probable. Too much pride, too in love with themselves, too in love with the image that they have created, and having too much fun bashing truly saved brethren. Uh, so be it. Their damnation is just. I don't take a lot of pleasure in saying that, but it is just. God is a just God who loves judgment. So for now, for now, goodbye.